I knew right off the bat that I would be using existing models for just about the whole scene because otherwise it would have taken way too long to model the whole city. Now this model, which I'll include a link to in the description, doesn't come with any textures, so I had to unwrap it and apply materials to all the different elements manually. I didn't rush this process because I was planning on duplicating the model later on to build out the city, and fixing a problem across multiple buildings later would be a nightmare. Once I finished this process with the first building, I did the same with the second building. The car also had to be detailed in the same way. I'll put a link to that in the description too. I decided it was time to start laying out the city blocks, but I wanted to make sure that it was as true to life as possible. So I did a little digging online and found the exact street in Paris where they filmed the original scene. I then found a map of the actual street and used that as a template to lay out the sidewalk and buildings. For the buildings near the camera, I simply duplicated the first building several times. However, because the camera isn't getting close to the buildings in the background, you can use the decimate modifier to reduce the number of faces in the geometry, thus making the scene more optimized so it can calculate and render much faster. After some experimentation, I came up with an optimal resolution for the buildings at the distance that they would be at. Be sure to apply the modifier once you're satisfied with the result. If you don't, it will constantly try to recalculate it whenever you change the geometry later, thus eliminating any performance boost you would have otherwise gained. I then decided to add some awnings to the buildings for some added realism. Just like the buildings, I had to make lower resolution versions of the cars as well. This worked out much better on some cars than others, so there's going to be some trial and error here. Before duplicating the crosswalks, be sure to add more geometry to help them bend, or they'll turn out like one of these. After that, I added street lights, a signboard, some bistro furniture, and some people to complete the scene. In order to bend everything together, all of the objects in the scene have to be joined together. But before you join all the objects together, be sure to loop cut or subdivide your street and sidewalks, or else it's going to turn out like this. Once your scene is completely done, and I do mean completely done, apply all of your modifiers, then select all of your scene objects, and press Ctrl J to join them all into one object. However, I highly recommend making a backup of your project file before you do this. Once everything is joined, select your object and add the simple deform modifier and change the mode to bend. Then add an empty in your scene and move it to ground level just below your camera. Then set the axis origin of the deform modifier to the empty. Because the modifier is affecting the entire scene with over 2 million faces, it will take a while to process everything from this point on, so be patient. It's worth noting here that the empty will probably have to be rotated one way or another in order to work properly. It was a little glitchy for me, so this may take some trial and error. But once all that's done, all you have to do is keyframe the deform angle and you'll have a world bend. Now, the observant among you probably noticed the car is driving by in my scene. Because everything is one object, the cars had to be animated using shape keys. Basically, shape keys are how you keyframe the actual vertices of an object. So in this case, that's the cars. Select your object, then head to the Object Data Properties tab and click the plus button in the shape keys area. This will add the basis, which is basically the default shape of the model. Clicking the plus button again adds the first shape key. 
With it selected, go into edit mode, now select the car, move it to its destination, and leave edit mode. When you leave edit mode, the car will jump back to its starting location. Then you can keyframe the value slider to move the car from its starting point to its ending point. That's it for this video. If you enjoy this content and want to see more like it, check out my other videos, and please consider subscribing.